just so we got them out. <laughs> okay, we'll start the November Energy Advisory Committee minutes the meeting. So as far as public speak, do I have any public speak? Very none. Moving on to the next. Maybe, oh, we got reviewed. Yeah, I guess you want to introduce I can you. introduce myself as a member of the public. Um, my name is Jamie Pockett and I'm uh, president of East Hampton. <coughs> Interested in possibly joining the committee and uh, with Mary last week, he kind of gave me a little bit of a rundown on some of what goes on here, so I'm just interested to see it in action, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Bob, do you want to introduce yourself? Certainly, Bob, sorry. Uh, okay. Bob Perry, I'm a member of the committee. And uh, I'm the chair of the committee. Um, <laughs> Jamie Lab, I'm the planning department. Yeah, so we've been trying to interface with the planning department at all our meetings since they have some energy related stuff and mm -hmm. hopefully we can coordinate better going forward and stuff like that. Um, so next thing on the agenda was the minutes. So just download those. Anybody have any comments on the minutes? Okay. So, all in favor? Approve? Aye. Aye. Alright, they are approved. Next. Ongoing discussion with the city planning department. Discuss the chapters in the master plan. So I did get a chance to review those. The transportation one and the public, uh, public service and facilities one, I didn't see too much that could be energy related besides maybe transportation and what type of vehicles to buy. Um, I know it was 10 years ago they talked about moving to hybrid vehicles and all that stuff and you know, there's been a lot of resistance from certain departments that wouldn't want to even try that. Right. Maybe they can all buy the cyber truck now instead of DPW. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's it, it's just a joke. But, um, that was the only thing really in the transportation chapter that could have some stuff. Yeah. Well, but there's also EV stations. I mean, there's some things like those. Oh, yeah, I guess that could yeah. be built in there and added in there, expand in there. I, I guess one of the questions would be, and we were, you were mentioning that before, is what's the process? You know, because isn't generally the city convenes meet master plan meetings, or you know, do you have a sense of what's being looked for, or what the I mean, town wants to tell so us to deal with this? I guess my, my thing, there was a discussion at the last meeting that we were, I guess, interested in trying to figure out pro future green communities projects, and I don't know how, maybe I made the suggestion um, that we should look at the master plan just to set, sort of see, see what where, where, where are we, what did we commit to, what have we checked, what, what boxes can we check off. So I think we're looking at this as a like very informal within this group. I don't think there was necessarily a plan to um, revise those chapters. Um, yeah, just table in which typically they're done every 10 years or so. Or I mean, this one's, this one's already 10 years old. I yeah. think we are in the process of doing um, chapter by chapter updates. So we've got the downtown, the, the downtown strategic plan. There was an arts visioning that happened. Um, we're looking at doing open space and. Uh, recreation that that they have their own plan, right, but they're but yeah. also ties into the master plan. Mm -hmm. There's um, housing. We're doing a housing market study as well as an affordability study. So the, the consultant will have there's a public component to mm -hmm. that, and so all these will be will be doing small in, incremental updates, and then I think in the next two or three, maybe four years, we'll have a a, new, a consultant who will come in and synthesize. All those pieces that have been updated and redo them. And wouldn't there normally be a public involvement of that synthesizing sort of as Correct. well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, just so we're like in the chapter about the public meetings they held and what priorities and stuff like that were discussed. Right. So there will be that process going forward, but we're kind of doing chapter by chapter sure. with each 
sort of interest or focus group having mm -hmm. there's there's been public, a draft ready yeah and there's been public process as right. part of each of those so it hasn't been with the auspices of like we're redoing the whole master plan right. um, but with the idea that these these, these sections can be updated mm -hmm. incrementally as we go so if there are if there's need in here to update these sections then flagging these sections and trying to figure out what grant opportunities we have coming towards us. So if there was a, let's say, a Green Communities grant that had a component of data, and if there was a data analysis and public meeting part of that grant that we could add and update, you know, or revise or provide data that would help us with that, we would do that. Otherwise, it'll kind of get caught up in the larger master plan because as far as the chapter itself, I mean, the energy and sustainability landscape has changed dramatically in the last, yeah. when this was written in 2006, 2007 time frame, it looks like. Yeah. I mean, it refers to peak oil as one thing, which that was an issue back then, but now with the fracking revolution, that's changed the whole discussion on yeah. that. So it's not really, you know, the whole carbon is a whole other different thing. Green Communities Act wasn't even mentioned here because it wasn't a law until 20, 2009, 2010 or something like that. Um, the Global Warming Solutions Act signed by Massachusetts and the state law, that was not in here because that wasn't a law at the time. It talks about how we import a lot of our energy, but now I would say over 50% of these types of energy is actually sourced locally with solar panels, so it's, that whole discussion is not here because this Oliver Street landfill, they talked about putting landfill gas, but there was no mention of solar panels on top of the landfill. So uh, there's a lot of stale information in this. Yeah, which we, we are finding in all of the, the, the yeah. sections of this. Some more so, some less so. But. It would seem, I, mean, I, I saw the mayor's um, notice a week or so ago that we're signing on with another number of other mayors across the Commonwealth and a 100% renewable goal. It would that was another seem that it would like, it, like it would make sense to reconcile the master plan with some of those goals so that mm -hmm. one isn't getting ahead of the other or yeah. one supports the other. Okay. Signing on to that, I mean, I was going to talk about that later in the new business, but that would have been a nice thing to discuss with the energy committee that was not discussed by that. I don't know if the mayor had no time to go over it, so she didn't have time to go through. Like, just because actually the idea of it may not be realizable to me. 100% by 2030? I mean, yeah. economically, that could cost huge expenses for power bills across the country, and so that's not really, you know, the, yeah. it may sound good as a good sound bite, but the practicality of actually implementing that by 2030 could be a very different reality, especially if it comes to city costs on how much we're paying for energy to, say, for example, we said we're going to be 20 and 100% renewable by 2030, so we have to sign a third party supplier that says they source 100% of their energy from renewable energy. And that costs twice as much as if we just got it from ever sources their re regular retail rate. That might, sh I mean, it's going to show up in all our property, you know, our tax bills. Mm -hmm. It's more expensive for energy. Well, if the city wants to go that way, that's one thing. But, you know, knowing that before you sign on to something just as 100% by 2030. So. I suspect at this point it's primarily a political statement of a yeah. Of vision of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then using it to work with other towns to gain grant opportunities or, mm -hmm. you know, taking on certain pieces um, of it. I know that, you know, I mean, we are mostly there with our electricity um, and we're moving with the new school we'll be even more further away from uh, gas and more towards electricity. So, 100%. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, even I was thinking practically the fire trucks. They're not going to have electric fire trucks in 10 years. No. So you can never be 100% by 2030 just because of those simple practicalities. Yeah. And, it, you know, there is some, at times, sometimes there is a benefit to getting some of the practical pieces of it. I remember several years ago, the town of Amherst passed, I think it was a net zero uh, policy for all public buildings. All new public projects would be net zero, and they very quickly found that nearly impossible to implement on several of their public buildings and then it created this big tension between how do we comply with this policy and also get the things done that we need to get done. Right? Um, so, 
Yeah. yeah, it's good to have goals. Yeah, because what they do to help to move you in a direction. Yeah. 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 I don't know that's not your department or anything like that. I'm assuming the mayor just did that. Yeah, this is actually the first time here. So. Okay, and we saw it on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. has to be true, right? <laughs> it is. I talked to her the other yeah, day. No, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say about it? Just uh, anything specific? I mean, the specific is that it's, it's a way to um, align with other cities across the state and look at sort of pushing the state government to fund you know, grant opportunities to help municipalities move in that direction. Mm -hmm. I think it's, of course, I mean, you don't write a letter and say we want to get to 96%. You write a letter and say yeah. you're going to get to 100%. So yeah. I don't think that there's any uh, illusions about trying to be perfectionist and get to 100%. Well, and you can you know, always talk about in that direction. carbon offsets and stuff like that, you know, to offset the point you can't convert. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. planes are always going to fly on jet fuel for the next several decades until they come up with some type of energy jet fuel. Lightweight batteries. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but I think that that was the intention, is that it was a, it was a merging of, of some like minds and, and utilizing it as to make a statement to move towards some grants. There's definitely a lot of what's going on, I mean, you know, about the MVP grants, and that's sort of really looking at sort of climate change and resilience, and so that's that's just one more piece in that direction. Uh, I think one of the one of the other pieces of it is that the um, the Green Communities Act, for all of good that it did, it also is very clear within the division of DOER in that they really have not reconciled the push for renewable energies and the push for energy reduction. And um, and so there's no, within the way green community is set up right now, there's no valuation of uh, renewable energy. It's just about energy reduction. And so um, I think that's, that's another offset of this is that it's a way to sort of try to reconcile that division within DOER and, and move them towards something that might be a little bit more broader view. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so going back to the energy chapter, I mean, it, it could use a significant rewrite. Um, right. uh, just an updating of what's currently going on and then even deciding what to do for the next 10, 20 years. Uh, besides that, because I think there's a lot that we can take credit for accomplishing. I mean, East Hampton's municipal buildings are probably 60, 70 percent powered by solar energy. Um, well, on a, sort net, of. on a net basis, sort of, yeah. <laughs> credits, <laughs> not on a demand basis. But then, you know, the old high school's gone, but that was still in here. You know, so there's the new high school with all the energy reduction associated with that, and there's the White Brook School that's going to reduce energy even further. Uh, you know, we could put that. Mm -hmm. no. I'll get to that oh, in a great community. Oh, no. Well, it'd be the same thing with high schools. You know, there was actually not a net reduction in consumption That's because there's an increase in use. So there's try and BTUs and stuff. If we move, you know. Yeah, we'll reduce. We'll definitely drop in BTUs. I mean, I think that's. That, I mean, that's certainly what I'm saying in the green communities report we'll, yeah. we'll, yep. later for later. I, I guess the my mind is: Do we? Would there be a value to offering? A, a revision to this chapter, you know, just as a first step. Yeah, I guess that's I like the process. If the process was happening now, I wouldn't want to waste the time updating it today, put it in a file, and have it sit for three years, yeah, or I mean, four years, and have it out of date by the time that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think that makes sense. It's not really. I think trying to update the, the chapter is sort of. You know, we're, we're get, it doesn't really accomplish as much as maybe other okay. projects right. that the committee can can work on, especially given that any actual update is going to need a public vetting of it, right. and that while this is a public committee, it's not the same. The same. Right. Yeah. Um, and the value of the plan is the ability to look forward, not not the fact that we capture what's been done over the past ten years. You want to do that, but. Yeah. It's really the visioning, it's the strategizing, it's how we get to where we want to be. Right. And I mean, I think the anything, purpose of doing the plan. Yeah. And I think, if anything, this shows just like, you know, the, the, like you said, the purpose of the master plan is to be visionary, and sometimes we get caught up on such small specifics that, like, two or three years later, it's not visionary anymore because we're so caught up in just the what's going on today. Right. So, you got that detail done, and then it's out of date. Right. And so, 
you know, just bring it back to like looking at projects and what we can gain out of this. I, I don't know if there was anything that we, we, we saw that it was like, oh right, we forgot. Like, was there something? Was there anything here that was like? Projects. Um, I didn't see anything that was really project specific. If or, you know, it, it was more focused on. There was a lot of regulatory and. There was some joining goals some reducing group. greenhouse gas emissions. Um, mm -hmm. Join with the Transportation Commission to support public transit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For planning coordinates and ordinance committee to establish green building codes, which has been done because we adopted the stretch codes, right? Yeah. Protect the Barnes Aquifer. You know, revocalization, food and energy supply. Well, it's, we're certainly partway there on energy supply. Yeah. Um, well, and even talking about just people's residential homes too, because we yeah. can find out how many kilowatt hour or right. kilowatts have been installed in East Hampton through right. um, Mass CEC data. You know, the recycling piece of it, which is under the sustainability, that's that's going to be an interesting challenge given what's happening with recycling well, yeah. market these days. Mm -hmm. That is really. Driving. I was off my driveway in the blue container, so therefore it's I'm, I'm green. I'm okay. Right. But and it's costing communities. It will be costing communities. You probably know the whole issue with the MRF now. That um, MRF, which is more where most of the recycling goes in Pioneer Valley in Springfield, the regional facility, those rates are doubling or more next year. Yeah. And communities, Holy Oak, we had a was it single stream or doubling? We had we were basically dual stream. We were able to get rid of. Our dual stream at no cost, and I think our bill is going to be two hundred thousand dollars next year, or something like that. So it's it's yeah, going in the wrong direction as it's becoming more and more expensive to comply with that goal versus mm -hmm. less expensive. Yeah, like I mean, even there's things that have been completed, like um, what is it? Uh, traffic lights to LEDs. I know we did yeah, that in most places. Yeah. Um, Street lights were mentioned. Those complete know. the Manhattan Rail Trail. Well, I guess that's done. Yeah. That's done. Yep. For East Hampton, at least it still yep. stops in Southampton. Why? I don't know why they'll ever build that. No, no, they did. They, they approved it. Crossing. Yeah, no, they're planning. Oh, they banned. They voted it years ago, didn't they? No. Well, there's there's mixed ownerships. There's there isn't a continuous corridor all the way through Southampton, which is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage green school design for new and updated school building. Here we go. Check mark. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. That's good. Yeah. There's stuff in there, yeah. but yeah, there's nothing else that's right. New there's projects, like no more for us to focus on, or like yeah. you dig right into right now that was missed or skipped. Or yeah, I didn't catch anything. Yeah. Like yeah. Build safe and adequate sidewalks. I mean, I guess that's. I'm not sure how that's in the energy and sustainability chapter. Yeah. Because walking and yeah. alternative <coughs> alternative right. transportation yeah. reduces. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think a lot of these ended up in like. It's yeah. energy and civility, and then transportation, and then right. recreation. It's like you, know, you can use the same, uh, same, same strategy in multiple different places. Yeah. 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 Things like complete streets didn't exist 10 years ago, and now it's you know the only right. way you're doing things. Right, and yeah. that's why we have to do things. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess it sounds like we're just going to be on hold for the energy chapter, and just note that. It, could definitely use some updating whenever yeah. we get to that point. Right. When yeah. the time arises, we're willing really <laughs> to jump in. Yeah. Right. And so the, the only thing in, in here that I saw, you know, so I know that we we didn't do all the LA, we didn't do all the street lights. There are still some uh, some streets that still have the older style. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know who has that information though, of which is the old and which is the new at this point. Mm -hmm. Would that be the BW has that somewhere? You got a car just look around. Yeah. <laughs> yellow, not yellow. I don't know yellow, if there's an issue of ownership of lights, if that's why. I think it was. Uh, because the, all the LEDs are city owned, I believe. Whereas, I assume the Like on my street in Button Road, we have utility. underground utilities and there's the poles. Mm. But I don't know if those belong to the Streethouse community, those belong to the city. I know we had one burned out and we called the DPW and they, they replaced it. Mm. So. Yeah, I think we accepted, but they're yellow. We accepted the. Button road took it over. Way, so yeah. um, that's so those 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 and, and, was, yeah. and when was that was built in Seven. 2007, 2006. Right. So maybe 
but we mm. but the project wasn't accepted maybe until after yeah. the retrofit. And they're definitely yellow, so they're not LEDs. Yeah, I know along Love Field uh, Street, they're also yellow. When you said that DP, you call the DPW, but it may be that the DPW would call the utility company, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. if it's on, if EverSource owns the lights, then they would typically do the repair. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if any of that makes yep. the case for future green communities grants. I guess we have to know which ones are LED and which ones aren't first. To know yeah, I mean grant. that would be a that I mean. If, you guys are looking to add something into next year's grant proposal, um, tracking down some of that data um, to see who even knows which ones were replaced, um, you know, and how many then need replacement. I think there was some issue, it wasn't just that we got to a thousand out of fifteen hundred. I think there was some reason why certain ones were chosen to not be replaced. I don't remember if it was a there was a different fixture, or I, I don't remember all the details. I mean, Mike, Mayor Mike would know all that detail. I'd probably, yeah. probably go to him over Joe or anything like that, actually. Yeah. But, um, and there must have been some transition of ownership that took place at that point. But yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, so Traditionally, the communities don't own the lights. Traditionally, the utility company owns them. Right. Uh, anyway, like you're saying, but I know that there, were, there was a focus on the major thoroughfares, um, and maybe it was the, the types of lights that were used on the major thoroughfares, so it was easier to... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Those are all traditionally on utility poles themselves, whereas some of the side streets maybe on, like, our streets, those just regular light well, poles, the decorative poles. Yeah. Right. Um, but see. yeah, no, there's an ongoing list for what we want to add to next year's Green Communities Grant, so we can add it on with Jeff and... Yeah. See if they want to try to figure out all those details and how much then would be needed to add. And that's always one of the things with the Green Community Grant they always do like when we sort of try to um, piggyback like utility funding to do stuff too. So it's something where the utility might have additional money to add to that. Yeah. So it might be worth digging a little bit. Yeah, so like sponsors time. LEDs for yeah. homes. <laughs> I don't know if Mass Save does the same thing for like you know, street lights. Yeah, street lights. But the utilities might have something that they would. Yeah, do. I mean, they gave us a whole bunch of light bulbs this past year for schools. Okay. So I just done a bunch and they ended up doing some here too. So. Okay. All right, moving on. The next uh, update on the Green Communities reporting. So it's probably about 95% done, got a few last details to get uploaded, and um, Jimmy was very helpful getting some of those pieces that we still needed to work out. I've got to still actually go through the, see what they're needing for the vehicle inventory. So, um, and then I've got to email some, email some stuff that the mayor wanted to take a look at some of the narrative sections and see if she wanted to add some of her 100% renewable yeah. letter kind of speak into some of that. So we'll see. Um, so the plan is to get that all ready um, probably by, you know, Monday. And so that it can be um, all uploaded and it's due the 4th, so. The 4th of December? Yeah. Okay. So isn't that, is that? Next Thursday? Thursday, I think, yeah. 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 So. Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday, something. Was like it that. due as of January last year, or is it? Was no. Was what happens is they it's due at one point, and then they kick back questions, and you might get a couple little questions, and it's a re, it's a new renewal, new oh, sort okay. of deadline date to get that. So in. last year we submitted so, it incomplete. No, we committed it. We submitted it complete, but they um, almost every year they've had one or two little bit picking back questions, and so we just revise it and send it back in. Um, I don't actually think last year's was too. I, don't think okay. I guess I was under the impression that you were up to the deadline, like in December. No, I think it was January. Oh, it was in December. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the we're only, you know we're still trying to figure out spending the little bit of money that we did get for the Green Communities Grant last year, and looking at what kind of projects we can do for next year. Um, 
and one of the things that we're looking at is the park and rec space um, and whether or not uh, if that's going to be an ongoing space and if it is to invest like many splits as opposed to a propane heater. Mm -hmm. um, so that's some of the different things that Jeff was going to be looking into. The, that's the known about known to talk curve. Yeah, yeah right. The, the, the curve spot. Yeah. Yeah, and that was that the the parks offices were recently just built, like two or three years ago. So. But it's most isn't it a trailer? Yeah, that's yeah. like a, I think it's a double. Like yeah, it's a double wide trailer with the yeah. So I think that I think we are probably going to be there for a little while, and so I think it does make sense for us to see if we can get some funding to put it in any splits as opposed to um, keep using propane. So Jeff knows about that one. It's definitely high on the list of priorities for the Green Communities Grant. So um, some of the some of the fun stuff. I always get to find fun stuff. I thought I'd bring bring a couple fun facts. So um, uh, so this is. Three years ago, in comparison to last year, um, our use of natural gas at Whitebrook doubled almost. <laughs> um, so that last fiscal year, we used uh, nearly 120,000 therms of gas. Holy uh, hell. <laughs> um, and this year's, the, the, and, this, and uh, that's a big part of why we're growing in terms of energy consumption right now. I don't have the final because I didn't have all the uh, the gasoline diesel data. I was missing a couple pages, so um, I'm going to finish that up tonight and then I'll be able to get actually where we are, but we're going to be building some cells were like this significant higher than they've been in the past. So if you exclude Whitebrook, how is everything else? Um, things are okay. Yeah. Because I mean, uh -huh. I look at Whitebrook as a lost cause at this yeah. point. It, it is. There still should be a reason why it's changed. Well, yeah, the, the doubling yeah. just, that's amazing. The double from three years ago? So Doubled three years ago to last year. Three years ago was the colder winter, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think the heating days were that much out of it. Which one was average last year? What was the, the last snap, year? Was the cold snap was last year. The whole winter, though? No, it was no, January, January, the week or two of January. Yeah, 1718 is where we had the huge cold snap, but I guess the rest of the winter wasn't too bad. Right. Yeah, yeah that was a big one last year. That's right. Yeah. That was when I said the machines go down a bunch last year. Yeah, so they broke and had, yeah. And maybe, so, so last year, there wasn't as much increase. From last year to this year? What was year? the middle year? Uh, yeah. the mid well, it went from uh, 64, 65,000 to 85,000 to 120,000. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely been <laughs> jumping each year. But those are huge percentages. Yeah. Yeah. And did we do so are they just trying to get the full use out of the building before <laughs> it gets torn down? I, I don't see I, what. I don't know. I talked to, I ran into Larry for a couple minutes and we chatted and, you know, he didn't know of any specific reason why. I mean, maybe there's, so there's more no gas leaks. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he, he's actually doing a lot more maintenance on those things right now. So um, I don't know why it's that much more. Because that'd be interesting to talk to, like, the principal. Are they doing it at a higher temperature? Or are they? Yeah. Um, are they stuck to where it's on all the time and it's so hot in there that they open the windows type of things? Right. I don't, not that I know of. Because to go up that much percentage, I mean, that's... Well, even electricity is up. Electricity for, um, so three years ago is 64,000 kilowatt hours. Uh, two years ago was 69,000 kilowatt hours. And then this last year was, um, I'm sorry, 600, 638,000 to 693,000 to 940,000. That almost seems like there's a change in yeah. use of the facility, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Is the That's building open more days? Is it being used longer? Is it the systems kept being kept operated longer? Yeah. There has to be, there's some size yeah. shift in that. <clears throat> yeah. Does any, I mean, it's compared to what it was even before. Does anybody look at these bills every month? You know, well, <laughs> trends like this. You want to know what another meeting that I made that happened obvious. finally? Yeah. Was we finally got a meeting with the, I, was pushing on the mayor's office to do this, so we got a meeting where um, we had DPW, the school departments, the auditors, the mayor's office, and we all came together and realized that first off, they're just paying these net metering bills. No one's actually even knows what they're for, 
And so I had to explain what net metering credits, credits yeah. are. I had to explain what SREX <laughs> are. Yeah. I had to explain that we're paying a bill, but that's supposed to correspond to a credit on bills. And so no one has checked what that credit on the bill is. So we're meeting again next week now to start to actually go to the next level of the conversation and look at and try to correlate to what kind of credits we're actually getting on which bills. What are the Schedule Z's that we actually have established? Because yeah. um, this was caught sort of by accident uh, like a year ago, but it was they thought that there was so much credits coming off of the um, the high school solar system, so they redid all the all the Schedule Z stuff to try to fix that, and it didn't entirely fix it. And because what now I'm now I'm realizing is that it wasn't that. It was that it was all the credits coming in from the Deerfield facility. The majority of them were going to the high school. <laughs> so it's it's a mess. And um, I've got several meetings on it next week to try to keep pulling back the the onion layers of it to try to find some sort of because I would think that, that, in the rough. that percent of an energy change would show up the school finance committee. I mean as a huge change in the energy bill, right? right? From a budgeting standpoint, looking at... Yeah, I mean, you budget $100,000 for energy, and all of a sudden, the next that it's $200,000. Yeah. It's a lot um, of books. It is. I mean, the, the gas alone was 190000 last year, you know, and that was up from, I think, 130000 So, um, the bill didn't double, but... Is there AC in that building? Are they running that in the... Whitebrook has a small section, the, the uh, office and the auditorium there has AC, but that's it. Yeah, could that so. account for some energy? I mean, the electric... We're the talking electric, about gigawatt uh, hours. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's no small amount. Yeah. So, I mean, I will dig a little bit more into this for sure and try to see. I mean, it is a lost cause, and yeah. but at the same time... Well, you don't want it to happen for next fiscal year. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, quite a normal house is a large house is like twelve thousand kilowatt hours of energy a year. And that went up nine hundred three hundred thousand in one year? Two hundred and fifty, yeah. Yeah. I mean that's twenty houses. Because you think that's a lot of energy. A lot of energy and that's just electricity. The gas is that's wow. Yeah. So that's the little fun fact that I found. Overall, um, Something like sixty percent of the entire energy bill for the or energy consumption for the city now. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm also trying to go in and trying to figure out um, the sort of how much renewable energy we're using. Um, do you have a sense of how much net metering credits Bob do you remember? I haven't seen a bit of data. So we haven't nobody shared credit. anything with me, so I have no idea. Okay, so yeah. we don't, you don't even have a general figure of what would projected to have been or anything like that? I have no idea. I have uh, look back at your stuff for a while. The contract is, uh, what was the contract? 1.5? Well, yeah, it was 1.5, I believe. But million. Yeah. yeah. That was the minimum. Mm -hmm. That was the cap. You didn't have to go back and take a look at the spreadsheet, I think. There was, okay. yeah, there were caps and there were averages. And yeah, 1.5 was the cap for Deerfield, and Oliver's like 2.2 to 2.6 million, I believe, a year. Could be, yeah. Roughly, but what that history had been. I think they originally were down to like three million, but it's not, I don't think I think that was the too optimistic. Uh, uh, Brooks solved that problem last year. No <laughs> 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 shortage. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the shortage. Yeah, we, we don't have to worry about shortage. <laughs> and uh, that whole conversation about natural gas, uh, you know. Well, at least we don't have to worry about the uh, pipe being big enough for the new school. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so like sad, it's kind of funny, but it's... Heating and cooling at the same time? Like I, well, that's the windows opening kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, when I was in college, I was in an old oh, building. Yeah. I was in a sky... It was like a 12-story dorm in yeah. college, and it was really old, so they'd have... Base Top floor, all the windows heat. were open. Yeah, yeah, it was 10 degrees outside, and I had my window open because it was 95 in my room. Yeah. It just sounds like... That sounds like something they're doing there. It's... I mean, I mean, or, my son's at this school, so no, that's not general practice. <laughs> that's but what, I don't know what's, I, you know, you know. At least I'm just curious because that shift, that's a size move. Something's changed. Yeah. So that's just I just not, saw that last night. That's not. I'm going to dig into it more. Are there any 
Do you bring this to anyone other than this committee, or is that something that? Or is this something you just found out basically after getting the data? I just yeah, I was just looking at the data last night. But I mean that data is there. That data is the national. I mean Columbia grass. Yeah, but I mean if now granted, if somebody was looking at the bills every month, this might have been caught. Well, yeah, but, but they're right, not right. even looking at the sixteen thousand dollar a month bill to Deerfield. So like they're yeah. just paying it. So that this is part of the conversation that's happening next week, where you know it's it's. it's trying to institute what bills correspond to what and what how often like quarterly somebody actually looks at them to double check that they're lining up or Not to mention in, tracking in against our contracts. Right. So that's that's all trying to like I said, pull those layers back and this is certainly another aspect of some of that. That's stuff. nowhere near as bad. I mean that's way worse than the uh, solar banging out for two months on the high school. Well so there's lost opportunity here. Here it's just we don't know if it's a lost opportunity, it's just nobody's paying attention. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well but if there's something broken, I mean, right. it's like a leaky water faucet. Type right. Oh, I see, in terms of the end of the, if the they increase didn't, in usage. Yeah, if they saw the huge increase in delta in usage, yep. they could have tried to figure right. out was the light just, you know, was, for an extreme example, a heater just left right. on an electric right. heater somewhere. Yeah. 24 right. 7, 365. No one's, no one's looking, and month to month, these aren't yeah. increasing. Yeah. And it's really month to month. Month to month, they're probably not as increasing. You want to look at month this year versus month last year yeah. and say, okay, why, the is, delta? why am I different? Right. I, mean, I look at that in my house. Yeah. Well, I did it for every single energy bill in East Long Meadow because I signed every one of them. And it was every month I looked at every one and called up the police department and said, hey, your bill's up, you're leaving the garage door open or whatever, you know, whatever the explanation was. Yeah. I mean, even gas, they tell you what was the temperature last year versus this year. So you yeah. can kind of know the delta. Right. If it was a much colder year, okay. But we have you right. expect. What was interesting to me at this meeting was how many different people touched the electric bills. I mean, there were, oh, yeah, so there were 20 people around the table, yeah. and <laughs> you know we have electric bills that go to DPW, the schools, planning department. Um, what does planning department get in? We oh, have okay. EV charging stations okay. yep. and the no, bike, the bike crack. So the, those are now yours. Those are, <laughs> but those, those should are, be tiny. They should be. They okay. should be. <laughs> but but I mean, there, it's just yep. one more. Right now, there. So there's another account. account. Yeah. And, and, and each one of those is their own account. So each right. charging each vehicle, yeah. station is its own, each bike yeah. station. I mean, each that's vehicle, all why we argued well, not each bike stall, six years ago for a sustainability each coordinator. Each station. What's that? That was why six years ago, eight years ago, we were arguing for a sustainability coordinator here. Right. To have somebody actually manage all of this. And we would have, that, if that person was in this role, the, these things would have been caught and we would have had savings anyway. equal to their salary already. Yep. <laughs> for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> and a decent salary at that. Yeah. Well, I mean, so that $100,000 change in util I mean, that's a yeah. two teacher salaries if, if at the and, school. And that's where it needs to be equated with the city is like saying that is the equivalent of three teachers for yeah. just not looking at a bill. Yeah. Well, so, two teachers, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we pay teachers a benefits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so digging into some of that stuff, and obviously, um, it's not always an opportunity to dig a little bit more and try to get three. more people information. Fiscal year ended when June thirtieth. June thirtieth, right? So yeah. we are already at five months into this fiscal year. Do we even know? Are we still at those rates? Are we st have we dropped right I, now? Has it stepped up even another thing? No, it did. It. Well, it was because it does show deltas in terms of uh, like how much in the past year, and mm -hmm. it, is, it was dropping. So um, it did look like it dropped off, but I didn't, wasn't looking at closely at that. So, uh, but yeah, no, I will follow up with the school department on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so that that, that kind of also did agenda item five of an mm -hmm. update on city energy billing issues, or do you have additional? Yep. Yeah. No. Um, and I, I reached out to PVPC to see if we could uh, use the Clean Energy Planning Assistance Grant that we got from mm -hmm. them to help with, Track this, and set up with something. the energy yeah. billing. And, um, so they're looking into it on their end to see okay. if what I explained to them meets what they're allowed to use the funds for. So. Um, and I, so before they contact the OER about it, I want them to talk to you, because you might be able to better explain what what it was. Okay. If they had questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whoever gave me a call, they will. But I think they're. Well, I should hear back from them early next week. Um, okay. And they're planning to come to the meeting on that. Yeah. Good for. Oh. For the 
uh, all the different energy, all the different electricity bill people. Whoever touches the electricity bill will be there to be able to start to peel back the layers and explain this is what this line item means and this is why the bill is this much and so your credit should be this much. And, and when does our third party contract end? Anybody know of that? Because that was signed with Mayor Cadger, right? So we'd be at two years, so I think we're possibly. It's probably a three year contract, I guess. Yes, they are. I would say it's probably this time next year. No, we are renewing. Well, I I would strongly recommend we don't renew. <laughs> Just with the way wholesale prices are locking in, wholesale prices have kept going down. I think Madison Williams wholesale prices for 18 were the lowest in the history, almost back to 2003, when they started doing markets. Well, the other thing that's out there too, and this would be something that. Um, could be interesting for us to get involved with is that a couple, a couple of the city council members were approaching me about uh, potential community aggregation and engaging that kind of process. For uh, solar or for? No, for uh, municipal electricity. Oh, okay. Um, so they just authorized, the, the voters just authorized the electric placement for? Yeah, that's, that's different. Just a, that's, for that's a corporate shell to be able to do the telecom stuff. Yeah, that's the yeah. statute that you operate yeah. under. You know. Yeah, but this would be that um, the whole commute that we could basically take everyone, all residents, mm -hmm. electricity bill, and get a single, as opposed to Eversource, a single um, supplier that would then supply all, everybody residentially and commercially. And then um, and I still look at it all as a shell right. And there, there isn't it's a a savings, savings to be across. achieved through yeah. that. I've been through a couple of different programs, and generally what they say is that if there's a goal that the community has in mind, you know, that the community really wants to move green energy forward and do other types of things, the aggregation makes sense. But it's not necessarily cost driven. In fact, you might end up paying more for your yeah. electricity, but you have more control over yeah, this what the electricity is. is and. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to be a little careful in here because there's, there, it does become a conflict of interest because this yep. is also what I do at Hampshire Power. Yep. So, um, but it, there are ways and there are a lot of conversations right now that are um, trying to utilize the, uh, the gaps in community solar uh, within the SMART program um, to be able to bring in an online more community solar within community aggregations um, that particularly would help fund some of the low income um, components that are right now not being achieved through SMART. Um, and so there's, there's, some, there's some potentially very interesting aspects. To yeah, the community SMART solar out. aspect I can see where you, we take a couple acres of city land, put up a several megawatt solar system and then all the houses they can't put panels up, they can <coughs> buy into that and that meter with that. Yep type of thing. Yeah, but there's some, so there's some different ways that are also being done within the community aggregation. So anyway, I'm just saying, I was approached by a couple of the city council members um, interested in having those conversations, um, and so we'll sort of see if any of that develops. But. Okay. That was all I had on the agenda. Is there any other new or other business to discuss? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay. So, Jamie, are you interested? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. We didn't scare you away at the last four <laughs> No. Well, I think one of the things we talked about too was uh, when we were just meeting was some of the other things that we've talked about about getting involved that we just have never done because we don't feel like we have the time and capacity. So some of the social media engagement, some of the more community engagement, um, some of those different campaign components that might become possible if we had more members. Just a simple thing of tracking all our energy bills for every city. Well, building. yeah, I know, right? Because <laughs> that is a whole other story of all the solar we've contracted before the Whitebrook thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if talked about that with you at all. He, he filled me in a little bit when we talked about just like the history of signing with the Deerfield project yeah. and a little bit of Oliver Street. We could potentially be oversubscribed for solar net metering credits and right. be a violation of contracts if we... But we, we but yeah, have any understanding of where Deerfield even stands to know if yeah. right. that's a reality, if they're meeting their 
We tried talking to them. They said they can only talk to the people that own it, or yeah, they wouldn't talk to. Oh, yeah, no, it's to. it's a complete mess. I mean, so mm -hmm. it's partly what we're going to look at next week is like even like what bills they're sending to us and yeah. mm -hmm. stuff like that. So are they even fully operational? Like they're setting the contract by a certain day and all that stuff. Like, you know, what's the status of the facility? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got a picture of that next one, next Friday. Should sure. we drive out there and take a picture? <laughs> Who owns that project? It's, a, uh, it's changing hands again right Thirty-five different right owners now. again. Yeah. yeah, it's changing owners again. GLC. And they have, hmm? GLC is going to. No, be. that's that's a different one. That's that's who's doing the um, Oliver. Oliver Street. Um, this was this was the LDSP or something mm -hmm. like that, um, and then it's about to be. But they've got a. Uh, it was Lake Street development something. Yeah, Lake Street, Street yeah. yeah. That's what it was, and now, and before that, it was some other Canyon Corin or something like Canyon. that. K-E-N-Y-O-N, yeah. yeah. I believe you. Mm -hmm. Canyon, and then it's right now in the process of being sold again, but I think they've also using Bay 4 as their administrator, so it's right. like, um, so whether or not the administrator would change or just the ownership would change, it's just not clear. But solar yeah. systems or solar industry is still just the wild blast. Yep. That's where I'm chasing the line. Yeah. Okay. So as far as our next meeting, since we're gone to our every other month schedule, it should be January twenty eighth. January twenty eighth. Does that work for everybody? It should work. For you in here. Yep. Yep. You do? Yep. Jamie, do it's Tuesdays. If it's Tuesdays, Tuesdays are generally good. Okay, for yeah. We, we try to do the fourth Tuesday of now we're doing odd months. Yeah. So, so we were doing monthly and it got to the point where we were kind of running out of stuff to talk. We're like, it's a lot. So, and that should give you enough time so if you want to write a letter then to. Okay, so you got the yeah, letter. Yeah, yeah so I'm yeah, ready to drop off. So, okay. yeah, I should have enough time you to might be officially be appointed at that point. Um, I think definitely it's still coming and just joining and that that'll be the process. Yeah. Um, I may be a few minutes late that day. I, my son has a doctor's appointment right before it and I have to drop him at home before I come here. So um, I'll just bring him along. He doesn't want to get his civic uh, lessons and well, it's right up to that the school committee meeting. Oh, so okay. it's like it would be a like two and a half hour <laughs> hangout. But no. I <laughs> I have to figure out how to do dinner that night. It's like a, I've got like basically from four to seven thirty. Just um, throw a pizza the other for him, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you want to send me. I can send a recommendation to the mayor too um, about the appointment. I don't know if she asks for recommendations or. She's brought people to us before when she wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, so. I've got to send her something tonight, so I can just mention that you're okay. off Okay. Yeah, I mentioned your name in the on there too, is like where I was referred from or whatever. So. Okay. So I'll That's be fine. sure to tell her, don't accept this, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go revise our uh, recommendation to the city council now. <laughs> Substitution, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a new name. All right. Do we? Uh, Pause this, turn it off. I move that we adjourn. Aye. Second, all in favor. Aye. Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Excellent.